it's been a long journey. Firstly, I'd like to say a massive thank you to anyone who donated anything, be it five pounds, 10 pounds, 100 pounds, whatever. I'll get the cliches out of the way right now. I couldn't have done it without you. They're cliches for a reason, because they're true and everyone knows them. I genuinely couldn't have done this without any of your help, so thank you so much. It allowed me to finish my foundation course. Yes! But then, COVID. Yeah. So, COVID hit right in the middle of our second term. That put us in lockdown and we weren't allowed to go into the school anymore. So we actually, we shifted. Our directors, Jane Moriarty and Sophie Ellaby, big love, big love. They were amazing at adapting the rest of the course. So rather than doing what the foundation course normally does, finishing the term with a showcase where you can invite your friends, family, you know, whoever, excuse me about, whoever along, I mean, you only get two tickets, so your friend and your mum. We shifted to an online project instead. So we were gonna to work towards a video project that at the end of the rest of the, I think it was four weeks we had. At the end of that, we'd do a sharing of all of our different video projects that we'd done. Rather than doing some theater stuff, we started doing some filming in our own homes, finding unique ways to get around the fact that we weren't able to shoot in the same space, which was really interesting actually. One of my friends and I, we worked on a scene together, but we, instead of shooting it in the same place because we physically couldn't, we shot it in a way that made it look like we were in the same room. So we shot her in the bathroom and me in the bedroom, but as if we were talking through, it was really cool is what I'm trying to say. Also, I'm gonna put a link in the description to one of the videos that we put out. We were given the task of, as a separate group, we were given a mockumentary, which was so much fun. Cause I mean, I love The Office and I love Chris Lilly, so it's like, we can just mash these together in some weird idea. So we did, and you can go watch that if you like. So yeah, at the end of the four weeks, we came together and we shared all of the videos that we'd worked on individually, and oh my God, everyone created such beautiful work. There were some people who did some really amazing, intense work, not even any like actual on-screen acting, they just did some puppetry and spoke over the top. Some people used imagery. Someone made a trailer for a film, basically. It was so sick. Moving on to the middle of April. Since lockdown started, I've been put on furlough, so I didn't have anything to do apart from my auditions. So I started submitting some of my video auditions, which was a really interesting experience, recording your monologues to a phone and sending those in in the hopes that the director goes, yeah, that looked kind of cool. Let's get him on a Zoom call. So I submitted a couple of my video auditions. I'd already done my first round for GSA uh, Mount View and Lambda in person. My GSA and my Mount View recalls got rescheduled to an online Zoom call or video submission. So my GSA recall audition was actually on camera live in my own living room, which was weird doing some like movement stuff, grooving out, surprisingly really hot and sweaty actually, really hot and sweaty, but it was great fun. I really enjoyed doing that. And then a couple weeks later, I got a no from GSA, which was sad because I thought my audition went really well, but that's by the by. It was about the 13th of April when I submitted my Mount View audition. And it was about a week before we got told whether or not we got in. And on the 21st of April, a friend of mine at about 1.30 sent me a message saying, Harry, I'm shaking. I've just had a phone call. I've got into Mount View. I started shitting myself. It was one of the most stressful days of my life. And the rest of the day, I was messaging people. I had my phone on loud, waiting for the vibration of the phone call, either to tell me that it was a no or a yes. I was in two minds, I was split. I was like, a couple of my friends have already heard, maybe it's me next. And then the hours went by and nothing. And I don't think I can explain how stressful it was. I didn't get a phone call on that day. I thought I didn't get in. Two days later on the Thursday, I think it was, I got an email saying, unfortunately, we're unable to offer you a place on the course, but you are on the reserve list. I had a big sigh of relief, a big wave of, <sighs> okay, that's something, I guess. But the email did also explain that the longer you are on the reserve list, the less likely it is because we get closer and closer to term. 
people drop out, people fill those spaces. So if you're not one of the people filling the spaces, you know. So I immediately picked up my phone, started messaging some of the second years that I knew. I was like, how many people on your course are off of the reserve list? Do you know the likelihood of getting into the school from the reserve list? Like, is it a lot or is it? I basically tried to give myself some hope and it worked. About a sixth of the course was covered by people from the reserve list. So I was like, that's already better than last year. And it's already a step forward from the foundation course. So May rolled by, my Italia Conti recall came and went. I thought it went well. They didn't think so and they said no. Rada just said no, which is fair. And I'd started to feel a bit down, a bit more like, okay, well, it's not gonna happen this year. I know I've got the reserve list, but who knows? So what I did was in the middle of June, I was like, you know what? Plan ahead. You can start working on plays that I want to read, monologues I'm gonna choose, and start prepping for the, you know, November, December, January audition period again, and go in and smash it next year. Get into drama school, all that jazz. And then on the 2nd of July, I was sat on the sofa, like literally just there, flicking through Instagram, and then I was like, oh, I'll check my emails. Looked at my phone, and was like, I just need to double check that I've read that right. I literally just leapt out of my chair, went into the bedroom, it was like 9.30 in the morning, so my girlfriend was still asleep. And was just like, I think I've just got offered a place at Mountview. And she was like, what's going on? Obviously like freaking out because you know, what a way to wake up. Then it registered and I got her to double check it because I wasn't sure if I'd read it right because I was just like, oh my God. That happened, so I've been offered a place on the BA acting course at Mountview, and I am so excited. Sorry. Agua. Obviously moving forward, you need a plan. So I started off last week looking through some charities. We went on the government website, we found about 70 different charities, and then we went through those one by one to find out which ones would be most likely to offer grants or sponsorships. And I wrote up a page and a half email, sent it out to all of the charities that I could. And then I started sending emails to other people as well, just hoping for a random sponsorship maybe. I sent it off to places like Disney and Elton John and Ryan Reynolds. But who knows, he might read it, he might get back to me. Why not, am I right? Probably a busy man. So, I did that last week and yesterday I went out and um, walked up and down the high street near me and I handed out my CV to anywhere and everywhere I could because I'm still technically furloughed from Hamleys but they haven't got the hours to give so I've got to find hours to work. So that's my plan. Wait, hold up Harry from the past. Harry from the future's got something to say. Really quick update, basically what happened yesterday and the reason that I didn't get this video up when I wanted it to is because I checked my emails at about five o'clock last night and I hadn't finished editing and I've been awarded a Dada, which is a full scholarship for the three years, which means my tuition fees are covered and I get a maintenance grant as well. So yeah, I was awarded that yesterday, which meant that I couldn't get the editing finished and whatever, but thank you again to everyone who gave me money because it's helped and now I get to go and do the three year course on a scholarship, which is incredible. Back to the actual recording of Harry previously. I just want to end the video here because otherwise I'll talk forever. Thank you so much to everyone who has donated anything. Your kindness means the world to me and I am so excited to see where we go in the future. Thank you.